Welcome back to GTM Education and today we're going to look at how to use exam papers to get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths and this is something that I assume is very very important because doing past papers, doing exam papers, doing practice papers, doing predicted exam papers are very important to get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths. I'm going to teach you guys how to use these maths exam papers properly to get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths and it will be very valuable information for you guys that not a lot of students not a lot of teachers and not a lot of tutors express to you guys and the secrets are going to be expressed by me so make sure you watch it till the end and take everything that I provide you so I would state that this will be one of the most important videos you will watch and further down the line more and more important videos in different different categories so the, the presentations are purposely not done in detail. That is something that is very important. I am not someone that's going to just list um, a lot of things in the presentations where you're just going to just blatantly read. That's not what my purpose is. My purpose is for you to focus on your attention on what is being said. Because what I'm being said is something that you should be able to get inside your brains because it's something that will be very, very essential. And I would urge you to turn your captions on to hear and read at the same time to see what I'm saying and going back to that previous point I made, it's about being very active when it comes to your learning, not being passive. So when you have your captions on and you read at the same time what I'm saying and listen to what I'm saying as well, rather than just um, reading from a presentation, if you're physically seeing what I've been saying under on below on the um, captions, it's something that will be um, very, very useful and it will get inside your brain as well. So there are some important things that you have to consider when watching this video. Um, there are some important things that I urge you to do before you go into the interesting part, specifically whatever topic this video is about. Before we get into that, I would urge you um, to listen to what I say in this video rather and make some notes as well, rather than just um, listening, being very um, unfocused. We don't want to see that. I would urge you to sit down. Um, have a laptop in front of a table and have a pen and paper getting ready to make some notes as you listen and watch my video or I would urge you to watch this video first then watch it again and make notes and another thing is I tell you to um, adjust the speed because some of you guys may think I'm speaking too slow and it is getting boring I've done this in a number of videos when I watch a video I find it too slow so I increase the speed on the video to times 1.25 times 1.5 times 2 because at the end of the day a lot of guys don't realize a lot of people don't realize the thing that we're always losing is time every second goes by it's time that is being wasted so if i'm speaking too fast at the on the other hand you can do the opposite according to your preference by changing to times 0 0.75 times 0 0.5 and times 0 0.25 uh, as you get the picture so at the end of the day it doesn't matter about the amount of times you watch this video it's about gaining this knowledge using this knowledge and making an impact on yourself and making a change and really getting closer and closer to what your dream and passion is so that is very very important these are important things that you must consider and I urge you to take this advice on because I do not want to see students that just wake up and watch this video or when I see students eating breakfast and watching this video or when I see, when I see students just um not focused at all, they're going on some way on holiday and they're just watching this video. That's not what something that I want to see. I want you to be focused, listen carefully and um, focus on what is being said and taking the advice and acting according to the advice I provide. So are you guys ready for the lesson? Um, your focus should be on the video, any distractions such as phones, laptops, consoles should be put away. I know some of you guys might be saying that you're studying and you're playing on your PS4 or PS5 and or your Xbox and you're saying that you're watching a video and you tell uh, your parents you're revising. I've seen students do that. And another one of you guys, um, put your um, device on do not disturb because I see people just scrolling on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube or any other social media while watching this video and I would urge you to say that this is your loss at the end of the day if you're not focused on this there's no point of watching this video and I would rather you save the video to your watch later and come back and watch it at another time when you're focused because that is more beneficial. I don't want to waste your time. At the same time, you shouldn't waste your own time as well. So if you're doing something else, do not watch this video when you have the time, when you believe it's the right time that you'll take on this advice and be very efficient with the way you're going to um, focus on this lesson 
and focus on the video that is something that is very very important so let's get right into the video so before we get into the video many of you guys may ask me who am i and why you should trust my advice and in terms of the first thing is the fact that i have received a grade 9 in gcse maths as well i was one of the first few cohorts to take the gcse's so i have the experience from what is different from 9 to 1 from the A star, the old A star system. And secondly, I do have first hand experience. I have been in your position. I know what it takes to get a grade 9. I have achieved it myself in a lot of my GCSEs. So when it comes to GCSE maths, getting a grade 9 is something that I believe is very simple. And there is something that differs from me when you compare it to your teachers. They they haven't been able to take um, the grade 9 to 1 GCSEs, they were able to have a lot easier GCSEs with the old A star to um, F system. So getting a grade 9 is much more different. It's a different experience in my opinion. So I have been in that position and I believe the advice that I provide will be very, very useful in the videos that you watch from me. And it is something that you should trust because many of you may ask, who is this man? Who is this person giving you advice? I believe it is very, very essential. And I have experienced what my grade nine friends do. I've experienced what my friends that do not get grade nine do or not even pass at the same time. I have been with a different um, crowd of people I know what the smart people do to get a grade 9 what the people that are smart but don't put the effort in that don't get a grade 9 or even get a grade 4 to at least pass an exam so I know the whole spectrum it's not as if I was someone that was just being with the people that was only smart I was with the people that were also messing about as well so I know how the things are done and you may be one of those people that are messing about right now when your GCSEs are coming very very close and you may be one of those people that is working very hard making sure that you get a grade 9 in GCSE maths particularly and other subjects as well. So I've also used my expertise in experiencing it in um, actually taking the GCSEs and seeing what my friends done that was right, seeing what my friends done that was wrong and then I took it on board to start tutoring students to get a grade 9 in GCSE maths and I have tutored students that have got a grade 9 in GCSE maths and in other GCSEs that I've tutored as well. So I know that my teaching capabilities is something that has been very very essential to the students that I tutor so I have taken that um, advice that um, um, recommendation for me to start a YouTube channel to start expressing what the ways to do things the secret tips that no other YouTuber will provide or your teachers will provide so I have taken on board that advice and started the YouTube channel and many may ask the question why this advice is free because normally when you tutor you do get paid um, beforehand to tutor a particular thing to provide advice etc. So this advice being free on YouTube the main question could be something that runs through your minds why this advice is free is this advice not as um, um, not as valuable as um, paid advice that's not something that I'm looking to um, differentiate I find all advices that I provide um, very very important whether it be free or paid the advice still remains the same so when it comes to why it's been free it's the fact that I want to change the perspective that getting a grade 9 in GCSE maths or any other GCSE is hard because a lot of students are doing it the wrong way learning the wrong way, um, understanding the topics the wrong way. There are a lot of things that I've seen that students, such as myself, when I was in your position, have been doing things the wrong way and have regretted it later on down the years. And when you move on from GCSEs to A-levels to university and then to a job, these experiences is something that will be vital as you move along that ladder as you get older and older. So the way to be done the things the way the way it should be done is something that I'm going to advise in this video so you should trust my advice and you should learn from it and take on what's been said and change and act um, according to the things I provide you. So many of you may now start to worry that um, what I've just said it might have hit you very hard um, suggesting that maybe you've been doing things the wrong way around but you do not have to worry because Life is difficult and when it comes to GCSEs, that is the first big thing that a lot of students, literally any person has 
like suffering um like found as um a major major hurdle in their life because when you think about GCSE it's a big thing it's a big exam it's a lot of exams a lot of focus and if you ask any adult that has studied lived in um the UK and has taken GCSEs they all say that's the first step to knowing what life really is and that's something that we learn from GCSEs but you do not have to worry because you may have had that reality check but you don't need to worry because you will need to take my advice and change because I believe that my advice is very very strong I've been told that you're a good teacher you know how to express things and for me I'm not going to be like those um, YouTubers that have a lot of transitions, a lot of changes, a lot of things moving around. All I need from you guys is to just focus and any video that provides advice that is very, very valuable will be something that will be um, taken on. So I do not really worry about making my videos look very um, aesthetically pleasing. I do not have that in my mindset. I do not have the time to focus on that. I rather, I rather focus on what is the best advice I can provide that can really be beneficial towards you getting that grade 9 in your GCSE maths. So to refresh your mind I would urge you to do something active before you continue watching the video that is something that I urge because right now um, a lot of students as I stated are learning things the wrong way. A lot of you guys are doing still passive learning rather than learning actively and that is something that I will touch upon later down um, the videos or maybe in this video as well so in terms of you guys make sure you do something active if you want to do something active an idea that I would have is to give this video a like if you have liked this video so far because that is something where you're physically having to escape from the screen go and clicking that button is something that is something that is seen um, active or you can have a walk around as well but if you're going to go and give this video a like if you're liking the video already listening to literally no nonsense information straight to the point straight to the facts I would urge you to subscribe to the channel as well so that you don't miss future videos I would really urge you for that because I would be uploading on a consistent basis hopefully so if you subscribe to the channel you won't miss future videos and the advice that I provide if you find this video so far very very beneficial then imagine the advice that I provide in the further further videos and if you're subscribed you will be one of the first people to access those videos and people do pay a lot of money for the advice that I provide in my videos so subscribing to the channel would be a good idea to get to get access to my videos for free and the next thing not just getting access to my videos for free but being one of the first people to get access to my videos because if you're one of the first people you can take on that easier you can act on that quicker and you could be ahead of the other people and at the end of the day life is literally a competition it's between you versus the rest of the people that are taking GCSEs for this particular scenario um, everything is a competition in terms of you always going to be facing other people other, other people if it's an interview if it's a job if it's a place at university if it's what you um, a sixth form you're going to apply for so there are a lot of things where you're going to be competing with others so subscribing to the channel and having that post notification bell on is something that will be very essential since you'll be one of the first people to be able to click on my videos watch my video take on the advice and be ahead of the curve so that is something that you guys should do so you won't be worried about what um, GCSEs or how it's going to affect you but you could be ahead of the curve and really ace those GCSEs and in particular right now GCSE maths in this video so in terms of the first parts it's how to use maths exam papers to get a grade 9 in GCSE maths properly and this is very very important because Everyone has access to GCSE maths exam papers, everyone has access to past papers, everyone has access to predicted papers, everyone has access to the whole things. But at the end of the day, what differentiates someone that gets a grade 9 and someone that gets a grade 5 or someone that gets a grade 4 and someone that gets a grade 8 there, or, and so, so on and so forth um, is the fact that how you use these exam papers. And in this video, we'll look at how to use these maths exam papers to get a grade 9 in GCSE maths that will make sure that I'll provide 
what I know to the best of my knowledge, what I have um, learnt over the years from doing maths exam papers myself to get a grade 9 in GCSE maths, but at the same time tutoring students like yourself to get a grade 9 in GCSE maths and check which works for which students, trying different varieties, learning what is important, and I've now gathered all the information into just a literal video for you guys to literally get this advice and act upon it quickly. So I urge you guys to listen carefully, make notes and watch this video and listen and learn as quickly as possible and take action as fast as possible as well. So in terms of the first thing is the fact that you should do the exam paper first and this is a step that I urge a lot of you guys to properly do because I I'll give my students a um, exam paper to do and they struggle to do it and they do not even do the exam paper and something that is very important exam papers are done on purpose at the end of the day you're going to have your exams they are done to differentiate you between the other students it is not as if if you get 100 percent in your maths exam papers that you're going to be guaranteed a great nine it's not that it's not like that exam papers may be too difficult so it could be that 50 percent means that you get a great nine at the end of the day it's you versus the rest of the students there are going to be some anomalies there's going to be someone that does get 100 percent there's going to be someone that gets zero percent as you can assume in a lot of graphs as you guys can tell, when you're looking at um, a, a subset of data, there are going to be anomalies. So no one's going to really um, get higher than anyone else. At the end of the day, it's that literal middle chunk that we're looking at where the most um, um, important thing is um, realised upon that middle um, part where if you have a few anomalies on either side, if you guys can picture what I'm saying in the graph, if you have two anomalies um, on the right hand side and the left hand side of the spectrum in the middle is where most of the students are so if you're at the top of that um, spectrum in the middle that's where you guys are able to get um, a grade nine so that's where it matters at the end of the day it's averages it's percentages it's um brackets that are put in place to differentiate students to get a grade nine so doing the exam paper first is very very important because i see a lot of students um, if I have 10 students, I give everyone the same exam paper, um, I also can see which is a grade 9. I can make my own marking scheme, own um, boundaries, own grade boundaries. Um, there's a lot of things to be taken into consideration. As you guys can learn from maths, you can learn from upper boundaries, lower boundaries, um, lower bounds, upper bounds, etc. Um, you know what the real spectrum is. If you know what I'm talking about, it applies in every um, statistics, especially applies in this world and it's one of the most most important topics and that's something that can be expressed in GCSE maths as well but doing the exam paper first is important um, because that's what determines you guys so if I have 10 students I give everyone the exam paper if you do not do the exam paper if you do not answer the question um, then how am I meant to know if you're going to be able to answer it and secondly how are you going to be able to differentiate yourself from the others and at the end of the day you're putting yourself at blame um, you cannot blame others you can't say the exam paper is hard at least you have to try and this is a very important part is even if you're stuck on a question you still have to do the questions that is a very 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 important thing a lot of you guys do this mistake um Something that I gained in my mentality, um, if you guys want to check out the mentality video, I'll leave a link at the top of the screen. It's a very, very important video. It's how to have a secret mentality to get a grade nine in GCSE maths. And that's basically the first step to uh, differentiate you between the rest. And the rest all depends on your mentality. So do check out that video. Um, that's something that I'll leave at the top of the screen. Or you can check it in the description. Or you can just go and check um, in my channel. I think it's the first video on my um, channel. So... It's a very important thing. Even if you're stuck on a question, you still have to do the questions. That's what differentiated me from the other students. Um, even if the question was difficult, even if it was a, like a question that wasn't even for GCSEs, I will still try to do something. It may look like a complete mess. It might look like as if this man has done literally nothing. Um, he just put a little bit of calculations there, here and there. But at least I tried. That's important. Do you try it? You know, when it comes to maths, it's, um, it's basically yes or no. It's not as um, English where you can write something and hope for the best. This is yes or no. But at the same time, that's something that is underestimated. You can get marks for your working out. That is important. A lot of I've seen a lot of videos. I've seen a lot of teachers explaining that this is just a yes or no thing. You either get the right answer, you do not get the answer. But that's not really true. 
Um, I've got many marks in the past where I just put random calculations here and there, but the teacher spots it and gives me a mark. That's important. It's a working out. It's how you express it. At the end of the day, these exam papers are designed. When you do your GCSEs, they're exam designed to see how you guys work it work it out how you guys use your brains how you guys um analyze and answer a topic because you, there's, there's a major shift from the grade um, a star to the f system to the 91 system and the main difference is the word application and it's how you apply your knowledge that's all that matters you may not get full marks in your exam but as if you put you apply that knowledge and if the teacher can work out the person marking your exam can work out that you've actually tried and done something that could help you in massively in the long run. That is very, very important. I urge you guys to do this. It's a secret tip that a lot of students do not understand. You showed your working out. It doesn't matter. But do not spend at least um, six hours answering a question when your paper is only one and a half hours. Do not do that mistake or two hours. Um, do try it if you have time at the end of the day. Um, so you say you've, I've seen a lot of students, I'd see this mistake um, a lot of the time. Um, I see students um, just sitting, doing nothing because they finish all the questions. But if you look at the exam paper, um, there's so many questions that's missed out. Then what are you doing with that time? At least in that time, you could at least answer those questions. Put some working out. You could get that one mark or you could get that two marks. You get could get that three marks. And it's one or two marks. That's the difference between a grade nine and a grade eight, a grade eight and a grade seven, grade six and a grade five. You so on, so forth. So it's very, very important you listen to that. So you take the action and act on it as quickly as possible. Because so even if you're stuck on a question, you still do the questions. No matter what it takes. No matter what it takes, do the question. Um, it might come out of nowhere. Sometimes... When it comes to a question, this has happened to me in the past and a lot of you guys do experience this. When you're doing a question, all of a sudden your mind goes blank, you can't do it. But save that at the end. Because after you go through the papers in the exam paper, so say you have 20 questions to do, say you you couldn't do the fifth question, if you'd skip that and remind yourself, and if you, uh, something that I do is I bend the paper so that I know at the top, so I know that I haven't done this question, or just write it at the top, um, at the back of my um, paper where it says number five, I have to do that or put it on somewhere on my paper so I know where to go back to the questions I haven't done, um, that's something that's important because you go to question one, go to question two, go to question three, question five, call of question five. If you skip that, continue all the way to question 10, question 20, question 20, finish the paper. But in those 20 questions, your brain had been going through a lot of work. It literally went through the whole specification of the grade nine to one system. So in some, from there to there, the topics were all around your brain while you're working out questions. So somehow the topic that you're doing for the question five should have maybe got somewhere and then it comes and clicks at the right moment in time and you can do the question i've experienced this hundreds of times um i can't my mind goes blank for a question um but i'd still do the question at the end of the day because after i do all the papers it somehow comes if it still doesn't come it doesn't matter i still try to do something from what i know hope for the best but at least you could get that one mark two marks and that's always been the difference between the grade nine and the grade eight and that's what different differentiates you and that's the way you use exam papers it's not only the exam papers that you do in the exam um practice exam papers as well we talked about corporate maths if you haven't checked out corporate maths um, i do urge you to check how to use corporate maths after seneca to get a grade nine in gcse maths that's a video that i had done previously to this i'll leave a link at the top of the screen i do urge you to watch this video um, it's a very important video using corporate maths and that's the final part is something that relates to the math exam papers so that's very very important so do check that video guys out it will be in the description if you would like it will be at the top of the screen and you guys know that just by now it will be at the channel as well so um, that's an important video it's not only practice um, the actual exam it's important to do it for practice papers as well that's what differentiates you between you and the rest make sure you do a question um, it's very very important make sure you do a question and take action as quickly as possible and then what you have to do is go to the answers and markets that's very important going to the questions marking it and the marking process is where the difference that secret um, after what I told you about answering um, a question even if you're stuck even if you do not know the question at all just put random things and try to think of something there should be some idea in your brain use that and um, don't be ashamed that, oh, the teacher's going to feel that um, you wrote some random stuff. Don't worry about that. Have that in your brain and just think. Something must, must pop out. 
Just note that, jot that somewhere. And there's many occasions where I just dropped Tom something at the top of this um, paper, just to, maybe that could be the thing, and I just dropped it at the top of the paper, and the teacher is marking that part of the section. Because the teacher's job is to look at everything. We have to make the markers um, um, look at everything. They will look at everything. That's the whole purpose. So it doesn't matter where you write if you drop something at the top of your paper, if you drop something at the bottom of your paper, just as a single, simple note for you, but leave it there. That's important. And you should go to the answers and mark it. That's a very important thing. But speaking of one thing, I think I haven't stated this point in this presentation, but something that I know that a lot of students do not do um, is when it comes to maths exam papers, is um, jotting um, things at certain moments time and then they cross it out after. Only when you know that for a fact that is crossed out, cross it out. Um, yeah, that crossed out could be, I've seen occasions where the teachers mark my crossed out work and they say that you could have got three marks there and he crossed, since you crossed it out, you can't do anything. So don't cross out work only when you think, and when you cross it out, don't like scribble across it and like put one line across it so the, t the teachers know they have that benefit of a doubt. That's an important word, benefit of a doubt. It could be crossed out or it could not be, but just put a line, just one line across each word that you think is wrong. Maybe that could be useful. You never know. So when it comes to the answers, this is the marking system is the difference between get your grade 5 and a grade 9, what differentiates the students, how you mark it. And this is the important part. Doing the exam paper doesn't really matter. For me, I enjoy doing exam papers. I just love testing myself. I love testing myself. I love testing myself. But at the end of the day, is the marking that is very, very important. I think a lot of you guys like to do exam papers rather than um, revise. I think that's something that is very, very... Everyone likes to test themselves. That's why exam papers are there. So the important thing about exam papers is fun testing yourself and doing the exam paper which I rec I've heard a lot from my students, I've felt it myself, do you rather like exam papers doing it or learning for exam paper? That's two different things. Do you like doing the exam papers itself or do you like learning the exam papers? I want to hear that in the comment section below. It's something that way you can refresh your mind a little bit, do something and then come back to the screen so that it'll keep you refreshed and focused in the lesson. So I'll give you that one second. So going to the answers and marking it is the thing that I was talking about. It's very, very important. And this is the marking process which we're going to look at. So in terms of marking, while you are marking and you get something wrong, mark it wrong so that you know. Um, that's an important thing. I see a lot of students, I tell them to mark your own exam paper. They mark it as if um, they don't want to make themselves look bad and they don't mark anything right. It's something that I see common. Um, the students don't want to make themselves look as if they're um, dumb or if they feel bad about themselves. They don't feel sorry for themselves and so they don't put that as they got something wrong. So that's something that I see a lot of the time. But if you get something wrong, mark it as wrong. That is important. And the important part is even though it's one mark that, that you miss, you still mark it wrong. Some students I see, they state that... Um, Oh, well, it's only one mark that I missed, so I didn't really take uh, action of that. But what did I say, tell you guys from the start? One mark is the difference between a grade 9 and a grade 8. You might think that this guy is going to extent, he's going to um, into it to a large extent, but I'm not messing about. I've seen many students that come to me and say, tell sir, I uh, should have got that one mark or I got a grade 9. So I should have got that one mark or I got a grade 4. It's a one mark that could come and haunt you at the end of the day. I've experienced it in the past. I've experienced it where one mark had um, prevented me from getting this, prevented me from getting that. So it's something that I tell you guys to listen. And when you get something wrong, that one mark could be the difference. When you mark it wrong, it's something that you know you made a mistake. And when it comes to marking your work, make sure you use a different colour pen or something that highlights it, or something that highlights that you got this wrong. That's important. Um, because I urge you guys to do that. Um, making sure you get something wrong, um, you highlight it with another colour pen or you use another pen for marking. You know your teachers use a green pen or a red pen to mark your work. Do something like that. Use a pink colour pen or a purple colour pen. Or something which you can differentiate that is a mistake. Do that. Some people just mark it in black pen and you cut it and you write in black pen as well. Then which one's the marked stuff? Which one's like the thing that is not marked? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a long job. Just finding it. That's just waste time at the end of the day. So marking a different color pen. If you've got a black pen, marking a blue pen is very simple. Two different color pens. And it should be useful to differentiate the mistakes that you made. And something that um, shows that you have made a mistake. So after you finish your marking, you go back to the start of the page. And that's something that is important. So when you finish your exam paper, you go back to the start of the exam paper. Um, that's something that I urge you guys to do. And then you understand why your answer was wrong after looking at the corrections. So you make 
um, corrections. This is important. So when you get a question wrong, you write down what the answer was. So say you're doing a Corbett Maths paper, you get this like straight line graphs wrong, and the explanation is there. Your answer is something different. So you wrote something as a completely different thing. What is shown on the mark scheme, you completely copy and paste that onto your paper. That's very important. Um, a lot of you guys um, might not like to print um, your paper. A lot of you guys like to do it on your iPads. Uh, the, the technology has advanced to a large extent. So another easy way is to just screenshot, screenshot that screen and take a picture of it and put it on your paper. You can add it to your PDF or you, you can do some editing and add it on if you want, if you want to go technology-wise. But if you're doing it on paper, just blatantly copy and paste what you got wrong. Doesn't mind. Doesn't matter. After you finish marking, you um, go back and make corrections properly. That's important. Making corrections, that's what is important with another colour pen. Making corrections and then understanding why your answer was wrong. That is something that is important. Understanding why your answer was wrong after looking at the corrections. What is different between your answer? What is different between the mark scheme? Why did you lose a mark? Why did um, they get for full marks? That's important. Um, do you get the ones where there's like a work solution that's more interesting to utilize? And in Corbett Maths, most of them are work solutions. In the mark scheme, it does show a work solution as well. But the index of mark marking scheme is a little bit more rigid, a little bit more... Um, it's difficult to see the working out because everything's typed up. But it should be, you can see the three steps that you should be able to compare what the two things are. And the index of marking scheme, it also says on the right hand side, um, like gives notes what's being done. So read everything carefully and write it down in a simple way. Um, you don't have to spend six hours just copying the mark scheme. If you literally got the whole paper wrong, do you think that's the right thing to do? I don't think so. But if you would like, if you want to spend the time, it could be a good thing to do at the same time as well. But understanding why your answer was wrong after looking at the corrections is important. Um, compare your work to the answers and make notes on why, why you got it wrong if you need to. So say you compare your work. You compare the answers. So you say you missed something here. You could write that, oh, you should have moved the equal sign, um, you should move the x to the other side of the equal sign, or you should have um, substituted this into instead of that, understand what I'm saying, so you got to make the notes, so you can see what you look at the mark scheme, look at your work, what did they do different, write that down, you don't have to copy and paste the mark scheme, if you don't want to, you can make notes as well, what, what you should have done, because you can probably get all everything right, and there's just that one mark missed, so you got, you, that's just a waste of time, just write copy and paste the mark scheme again, so you can just put an arrow, show that you made a mistake here, um, suggesting that you should have done this instead of that, then that should be suitable, because the mark scheme, scheme is something that is um, important, and the important thing about this is don't quickly compare, don't rush until you properly understand on how you got it wrong. A lot of students hate the markings process, even I do hate the marking process as well, it's a long time, it's a lot of times, but as people spend like one minute to just mark, but spend one and a half hours on the paper. If you get everything right, that's suitable, but if you get most of them wrong, then what's the purpose of it? What's the purpose of you doing the exam paper? That is why I urge you to don't quickly compare, don't rush until you properly understand how you got it wrong, take your time. That marking is the important thing, that is very, very important. Get the answers, if you got it wrong, write it down, make notes, listen carefully, watch it carefully, look at the videos, Make understand it. If you properly understand that, you have to properly understand why you got it wrong and that's where the learning process takes place. If you can learn why something is wrong, then you would be able to get it right the next time. So. That is an important, important, important step. So now we're going to look at the next part of the of this presentation slash video, and that is reflection. And this is an important word. So you've done your marking process. That could maybe take you 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You make your corrections. That's important. But this is where the process gets a little bit longer, and that's the reflection. And the first part is that on the question that you only get wrong, um, even if it is one mark, you meant to do find a similar question from the textbook exercise. So you know, many of you guys may ask me, um, so in the previous video, so if you guys haven't checked that video out, the Corbett Maths video, and how to use Corbett Maths after you use Seneca, why are we not using the textbook exercise? Why are we using only the exam style questions, the practice questions, but this is where the textbook exercise comes into play. So you get a question wrong, you know the topic of the question, you got it wrong, and then if you got, say, a question wrong in straight line graphs, there's also, so you got it wrong after you've done the exam style questions, so what do you do? You go and use um, the straight line graphs textbook exercise, take the information from there, 
um, there's similar questions in the textbook as well. You can, don't have to just use the Corbett Maths one. There are so many other textbooks. And if you would like, I can put like a whole list of the best text textbooks um, at the end of my screen um, in the um, description, I mean. So you can check that out in there as well. But finding a similar question and doing it is where it matters. And if you can't find a similar question on the textbook, you can redo the question that you got wrong. That's another thing that I urge you. But when you do redo a question, um, you do it on another paper by covering the question up and by not cheating. So what, what I mean by not cheating is a lot of students just basically look at what the mistakes they made, just literally copy and paste it and say that they've done the question. Cover the question up, put it somewhere else, maybe do it 10, 30 minutes later because you might remember the answer. Then do a question or you can even edit the question yourself, put a few different numbers instead of the numbers that are there. And so if it said like uh, something like um, um, coordinates 1, 2, you can change it to coordinates 4, 5 and it translated or something like it, it reflected on the x-axis, um, you know what, it, it's the difference. If, it's, if you change the numbers that are there, do you understand what I mean? So you don't have to have the same question, try it with different numbers and you should be able to work the answer out. That's important. Do not cheat yourself. At the end of the day, it's you that is losing. It's all about you. This is where the mentality comes into play. Check that video out. It's very, very important. But um, doing another paper, um, on another paper so do not do it on the same exam paper because you literally can see the question and cover it up using a paper and write it on your, t on your notebook or in your um, book course on your piece of paper or in your notes somewhere but do not um, cheat cover the question up do the question not cover the question up cover your answers and your mark scheme up um, and answer it so that you'll be able to answer the question so not covering the question up i made a grammatical error there but covering the answers so you know what i mean by covering the question up so you only can see the question um and not the answers and the mark scheme, and then you redo that question. That's very important because you can just simply just look at the um, the answers and look at your own answer and literally copy and paste it, and then you think that you revised, you think that you learned, but at the end of the day, it wasn't something that I recommend as learnings. It's pretty much just cheating yourself. So that's something that is important, and if you still get the question wrong, keep learning, understanding, and doing the question again. So you say you do it again and you still get it wrong, that means the learning process hasn't happened. So what you do is you go and check out other learning videos. So if you want, I can do more and more um, videos on how which videos, websites you can use to learn, which are useful to understand. Um, you can go back to Seneca Learning. So you haven't checked out the Seneca Learning video. That's a very, very good video. Uh, not good video. Um, like the video that I explained using Seneca is a very good video, but using Seneca as a tool to get a grade 9 in GCC Maths, a secret tool that not a lot of students know about, is another video that I have recommend to a large extent. Do check that video out. It is very, very important. They're all at the top of your screen. If you click the I button, it should show all the cards that are there so that I'll be able to put five cards. So I'll put five of the important cards that I recommend and you guys could check those videos out. So use these devices use these websites use these opportunities to do the question again and do a similar question if you find one in another textbook exercise somewhere else something else something that is similar to the question you've just done and if you get that question right then you've learnt you have learnt the process also in Seneca Learning, there's exam questions for you guys to do do that there as well there should be a similar question because at the end of the day the exam AQA or Edexcel or OCR, they're not going to find another exam paper. They can only be within your specification. So a question like that will be available um, in your um, exam. And at the end of the day, it's a specification. This is the boundary for the um, exam boards to ask you questions on. That's why a lot of teachers make predicted papers because they know pretty much what it's going to be like. Um, the exam papers can't do anything different. The teachers can make their own exam papers. The students can make their own exam papers. So the device, the resources are literally completely there. You don't even have to pay for resources. They're literally there, a lot of good ones for free. So use those and learn and understand and do those questions again. But if you're still struggling, to ask your teacher, um, struggling with the question, you can ask your teacher, you can go to your tutor, you can go to your friend for help. Do that. Don't be like, oh, it's not coming to my head. Um, I won't be able to survive. I can't do this. It's too difficult for me. I cannot do this. Um, just leave it. Just pray that the question doesn't come up. That's a lot of students. I hear that word. I pray that the question does not come up in the exam. And the first question that comes up is that question. So don't do that mistake. Don't have regrets. Um, struggling, ask your teacher. Don't be ashamed. This is where the mentality video comes back into play. 
don't use your teacher as much as possible. Check that video. It's a good, good video. Use them as much as possible. At the end of the day, you're looking at yourself. So these are the things that I recommend when it comes to um, doing these um, important things for reflection, learning, taking advice and acting upon it as quickly as po uh, possible. So looking at this reflection, so you basically... Get the question that you got wrong. Even if there's one more, you can see the question that you got wrong. Do a similar question from the textbook exercise. If you can't find a similar question or the textbook exercise, redo the question that you got wrong. Um, do it on another paper by covering the question up and not cheating. So you cover the answers up so that you can only see the question and do not cheat yourself. By just by You can cover it up with a piece of paper and then you just lift the paper and then you quickly just look at that and jot it. I see a lot of students doing that. Don't do that sort of things. You're cheating yourself at the end of the day. Do it on another paper by covering the question up and by not cheating, that's what I just mentioned. Um, even if you get the question wrong, keep learning, understanding and doing the question again. That's the learning process. That is what learning is. You keep trying, 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 trying until you get something right. If you can change something that was wrong, right, you have learnt it. If you cannot swim, if you couldn't swim but you now can swim, you, you've learnt it. That's what learning is. That's important. That's the way you can get the most out of using exam papers. Um, I've teach, taught you guys how to use the exam paper, what to exactly do when you're doing an exam paper, and then how to reflect on it, how to use the marking system, use the marking scheme, and use the marking trips and techniques to get a grade 9 in GCS maths. And that's where the difference is. Um, the grade 9 students reflect. They always think, oh, why did I lose this one mark? Why did I lose these 10 marks? Why did I lose these 5 marks? Why did I miss this question? They want to know why and they want to get that, prevent that happening. That's what they do. The grade 9 students do not like to get things wrong. So they keep rev revising, keep learning until they get those things right. That's the way it is. And, you, and what your option is, you don't have to be the best student. Because the best student that gets a grade 9 and someone that was literally just one mark into the grade 9 boundary, they both still get grade 9 at the end of the day. So you don't need to be the best student. You don't need to get 100%. That's not the aim. The aim is to be at the top of the others. And if you can get into that boundary for a grade 9, you've got a grade 9. I, was gonna say, I wouldn't say that I, would, I was the smartest student, but I've got a grade 9. There were students than me that used to get 100% every exam. I, could have, I was one of those students, but um, I've seen students that do not really care. I do not mind about getting one mistake or getting two mistakes. That's not the problem the problem is that you have to be ahead of the other students if you get that one mistake and get that two mistake but if your friends if your other students get that one mistake two mistake doesn't matter but if you get a mistake where your friends got that right and your other students got that right that's where the problem lies that means you're one below those students so you have to be ahead of them so you have to get those questions right that's why a lot of students teachers say oh do all the grade five questions first get all the grade four questions uh, done and dusted because that's where you can at least get grade 5 then do the grade 6 questions then do the grade 7 questions then do the grade 8 questions then you keep moving up and up and up and then you'll be able to get grade 9 that's the way to do it but when it comes to exam papers looking specifically at it you can do an exam paper it's the best thing it's the, one of the best revision resources because you do an exam paper and if you do not do any you don't have a revision guide don't have nothing and you literally just do an exam paper nothing else in your hand just do an exam paper completely just trusting your knowledge with no other help at all you do an exam paper and you get literally 40 percent out of the whole exam you get literally most of it wrong you only get 40 percent right but that 60 percent you 40 percent you got right you know that you know those topics the 60 percent you got wrong is what you got to work on so you don't have to waste your time working on the things that you already know you only have to work on the things that you got wrong and that's where you use this video to learn um, you reflect on it, the tricks that I teach you in this reflection video, the tricks that I teach you in how to mark a video, the tricks that I teach you in doing the paper itself, um, it's important and it should help you get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths. So, as you can tell from the how to use exam papers um, to get a grade 9 maths in GCSE Maths video, um, if you enjoyed that video, we're going to now change to another video in terms of a new video that I'm going to upload which is the best websites to use to get a grade 9 in GCC maths. Some of the video, some of the websites I've already hinted such as Seneca Learning, Corbett Maths but there are some other few ones that I recommend to use so there will be a whole video on this explaining the best ones to use so you don't have to waste your time looking at which website to use, which website to use. The certain amount of websites that I believe that you just need to get a grade 9 to get a GCSE maths. I will show those five websites or six websites or the seven websites or those ten websites that I believe is good enough to get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths. 
don't have to spend time searching, researching, I'm doing all that work for you. I've had the experience of teaching students, I have the experience of um, doing it myself and which ones I found valuable, which ones I found useful, which ones I actually used to get a grade 9 in GCSE Maths. So this will be the video, so that will be on your screen, that has been on your screen um, all this time. Um, so enjoy this video um, and I would urge you to watch the video on the screen because that's an important video if you enjoyed this one and you will enjoy this one to get a great nine in GCSE maths I re highly recommend it so do check it out so if you want to take a break pause the video then click on it later or cl save the click on the video and click it to your watch later but check this video out thank you for watching